Okay, and it's a great honor and privilege to have Keith Haskell today, who's an investigator and a journalist in Minnesota and this whole region, really. Keith, thanks for coming out today. We're going to talk about the new media. Uh, tell us a little bit about how we do that, you know, the new media versus the legacy media. Go ahead, Keith. Oh, as first, thank you so much. And truthfully, the opportunity and the privilege is mine. It's good to see you again. Uh, I, I'm really thankful that you're helping get this word out. When you talk about the new media, uh, I'm going to flip that switch just a little bit for you. We're going back to the old media. Right. We're going back to the days before probably even the Pony Express. We're going back to the days where the media was talking to your neighbor. We're mm. going to where news spread by way of word of mouth. And mm -hmm. there can be some issues with that. There can be some problems. Because if you remember the old elementary school game like I do of playing telephone, telephone. right? things can get misconstrued. <laughs> but what's <laughs> happened over the last couple decades is that has flipped. And now the media that you can't trust, the media mm -hmm. that lies to you, and we're going to touch on that in a minute, the media that lies to you is legacy media or MSM or mainstream media as we call it, or someone dubbed the term a while back, fake news. Yeah. And the sad part is that part of our, our society totally trusts whatever we see on the boob tube. Right. The other part of society, now listen close, this is going to step on toes. The other part of society says, oh, God, you can't trust the media. We got to go independent and da 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 <laughs> But they freak out about everything they still see on the media. <laughs> I thought we didn't trust that. So what we're doing, Wes, and this is a nationwide <laughs> thing, and it's not any one group. We're teaching people like you and like I how to be our own media. Mm -hmm. Now we're right. going to try to take steps to the next level, but really what we're doing is getting the word out. Uh, the video work that you've done at Rochester meetings and, and uh, protests and whatnot and T.C. Pearson, um, you know, fabulous work. Uh, and, and even people, gosh, if you think back to Stu Peters only a year and a half, two years ago, that perfect. man blown up, but there's a perfect yes. example of somebody yeah. who said, I'm tired of legacy media. I'm going to tell the truth. Isn't that fantastic? What a long way we've all come. Yeah. I mean, that, and then what we're doing inspires others to do the same. And we're not competing for eyeballs and we're not competing for um, cash the way the legacy media is all corporatized. Wait, are we You're supposed to, to wait? Are we supposed to get on everything? We're growing the pie. We're making it larger. We're bringing in normies. We're bringing in more people to do the same work and also to consume this stuff. And then we're just we're stepping up and leads to other people getting involved. Stu Peters is a great example of that. He's an inspiration. Yeah, he is phenomenal. Um, who's who's the other one that I? Um, Bradley Dean. You know mm -hmm. again. At, been at the game a lot longer, but man, talk about hard hitting, truth seeking, no BS. Um, you know, and I, I really think that the fear that a lot of, as you use the term normies, oh, well, I'm not a journalist, or I don't have um, <coughs> Keith's voice or his his stage presence, and, and we're going to get to the braggadocious part in a second because there's a part that people yeah. don't know. Um, yeah. You don't have to. Um, I have fat fingers. I mistype things all the time. I have one computer that as soon as I, I pre-read something that I'm going to post, whether it's Twitter or whatnot, um, everything looks good. I post it, and there are spelling errors. Now, I've had people look at me go, yeah, you're crazy. It doesn't work that way. I've had adults next to me go, holy cow, it really did that. You had it all perfect, and now it misspells something. Um, it thank inserts you. errors. Recently, yeah. new form of censorship. Errors yeah. are being inserted into our now, I don't have my tinfoil hat today because I didn't want the glare for you. But, you know, big brother, if you're listening, can you quit jacking it up? I already suck at spelling. Um, <laughs> so, so really what we want to do, really what we want to do is just get off a word and capitalize the second letter. So it looks like you forgot the first letter of a word. Yes. It's yeah. too obvious. So really what we want to do Wes, is we just really want to encourage people to turn your best friend on at all times, your little camera phone and yeah. start recording. When you're interacting with an so, elected servant, you don't know what they're gonna say stupid. Um, you don't know, you don't know if your friend and mine, Gene Dornick is gonna stand on the house floor and call some first class pilot a stewardess 
<laughs> you want um, those moments recorded. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know about that situation. And you know, I I'm personally I I like Gene Dornink. I, I haven't so I, I missed I don't I don't know what but I I gotta confess, I full disclosure here, I I, I like Gene Dornink, but but anyway, I uh, <clears throat> That when that I uh, dislike him, you know, the, the I, am seize, I am going to seize the opportunity to rib him just a little bit. <laughs> All right. So um, the, the success of the new media is apparent. Uh, what you were saying yeah. about people having their phone ready led me to remember that I was in a political meeting a week ago, uh, uh, two weeks ago, right after the election. And it was mentioned by one of the participants. Oh, yeah. No, wait, it was Election Day. So it was November it was the fifth when we had that uh, primary. Never oh, mind. March, the March yeah. election. Yes, the primary. Yeah, uh, instead of the caucus process. But but the person mentioned that their ballot looked different than somebody else's ballot had been because they'd already talked about the ballot that morning. And and my ballot, I took a photo of my ballot without thinking that I would run into other people an hour later at about nine o'clock in the morning, I would run into other people who had ballots that were different from mine. And they said they they had already spoken with someone else. Their ballot was different. So they snapped photos. And so by the end of the day, we had four different presidential primary ballots that we that we collected because the lady said, I thought about what Wes said about having my camera ready. And I took a picture of my ballot. And it's like, wow, <laughs> it's like just having your camera ready for that moment where you see something, you say something, you, you see it, you know it's not right, you snap a picture of it. I took a picture of my ballot because I spoiled my ballot in front of the election judges and I made a complaint about the election process. So I actually filed a complaint. I didn't even bother filling it out. I just said, uh, there's three people on the Minnesota ballot who aren't running. Why are their names on the ballot? So we had we had options for people to vote for people who weren't contestants anymore. So anyway, um, but, oh, but you, success, you bring up good... yeah, but but have your camera ready is your point. And I meant to uh, thank you for making that statement because that that way we all have the hd camera with us we don't need the media so our success is causing the censorship it's also causing the media to copy our methods now local media they're doing what i do where i walk around with a camera and i'm talking to the camera and i'll get like it goes up over a thousand they have to tamp it down to 300 you know, you play that game where you watch the numbers go up and down like a stock market ticker. Well, they mean like an election. They're walking. Yeah, they have a cute intern, a cute intern walking around with the, smiling at the camera. Hi, boys. You know, and she's got either an Asian or a black with her. So it's like it's biracial. They're, Hi, everybody. We're in Rochester. And they're moving the camera like it's NYPT blue. And uh, it's like a TV show. They're copying our styles, Keith. We are the ones who go live, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And so you're good at going live. Do you want to tell everybody why it is that you have the gift of gab and the theatrics to be able to go live and think on your toes? Because the children don't get that. They want to read from note cards in the studio. Well, I will. But then you have to allow me a little bit of time to tell you the part B of that or the, or the opposite of it. My, okay. uh, I grew up in a small town in southern Minnesota. I'll just name it for you. It's Morton, Minnesota. Um, very, very small town, 790 people out near Redwood Falls. And for some reason, my father was very proficient in CB radio and even ham radio and radio sales, which got me on a microphone at a young age, talking all across the country at times, if not the world. And eventually, I started doing the public announcing for high school basketball, football, that was probably seventh or eighth grade, West that I started that. By the time I was a senior, I was going out to other communities and announcing for their community parades. And then I went to school at uh, Brown Institute for Radio and TV Broadcasting. And things have progressed <clears throat> and really accelerated. Almost embarrassed to say it in a fun way. I became a professional wrestling ring announcer across a several state area. 
um, and then actually started my own wrestling organization at one point in time. So I have interviewed some mighty big celebrities in the sports entertainment world. And uh, between that and then the retail loss prevention side of my life, which was a full 30 year career, uh, I've done a lot of court testimony and speaking as well. So you put those two or three things together and you have that side. That's kind of the, the braggadocious out in front yeah. of your face, not afraid to talk. The flip side that a lot of people don't know is the retail investigative part also gave me a lot of experience in undercover work <clears throat> and blending in. There are a lot of things that I've done or movie and not movies, stories that have been even on legacy media where I supplied a lot of the detail, a lot of the facts, sometimes even the footage. My name is nowhere in it. Uh, it's the same with a lot of my public data stuff that we'll get to eventually. You don't always I I know that I have the appearance. And yes, as Redbeard said, I like to hear myself talk. There actually is another side of me where I'm very skilled at blending in and not being the center of attention when you need to go that route to get your information. Right, right, right. Well, it's it's incredible because uh, I know the the way that our interests dovetail with the uh, uh, getting to the bottom of the police reports or requesting uh, materials or being able to look at original source material and see where something's been uh, altered or cut and pasted or there's some something that's being uh, suppressed. It's uh, it's fascinating when you talk about looking at a document. You can just tell it's not an original because the idiots who photocopied it left the staple you know, at the upper left hand corner, you can see that it, this was stapled together. So it's it's not original. You're looking at a photocopy. I mean, it's just they make silly mistakes. So yep. Um, yep. and the more it, you do these things, the more you you catch on, you know, and we, we teach them seminars on things to look for, things to catch on to um, ways to dig a little bit deeper that you may not have thought of because, you know, you've been in it a while. And, and there, you know, there's hundreds of people in Minnesota that do what you and I do now. What's the gal up in, uh, I'm going to forget her name now, up in the Otter Tail County area. There's one or two up there that are just exposed, exposed, exposed. And again, there's a perfect story. If they, if Otter Tail County GOP, <coughs> EPOU, did not take pictures to show who was supposed to be a delegate and an alternate, they'd have never had a case. But they took pictures during that meeting years ago to show that those names had been changed. And that's why I believe eventually they'll be successful. And it may be the demise of uh, the GOP leader. Leader, I use that. The, the, the BPOU old timers have definitely been used to muscling through their way. And they're surprised when we pull out a camera and then, and then we turn it back on them. Now there's evidence of them. Uh, denying people a seat as a delegate or there's evidence of people not showing up when they're a delegate and they miss their county convention and then somehow they go on to state they still they you know or the the, the ward and precinct room didn't happen the names were filled in later you know it, it's just you you shrug your shoulders and you go well okay this year the weather was bad we had an instant snowstorm that came, it started in the afternoon, we got snow and ice, and our attendance numbers were down, but of course, those rolls will go back up as the names are filled in later. But um, there's also a truth teller over your right hand shoulder there, the Liz Collin book, They're Lying. That's been an inspiration to people too. She walked away from WCCO when she realized that the truth wasn't being told, and her career has skyrocketed in terms of alpha news and the books that she's coming out with so there's there's an inspiration uh, what what can we say to these young lions and lionesses of the media where they think they need to go the route i mean these interns are parachuted into rochester from all over the place i mean and from as far away as chicago right. they come out from the journalism school class and they get like dropped into our media it leads to fatal errors, okay? When a reporter says that this, this, uh, there's a, a literally happened in Rochester. There's a, there's a, a dead, a man, a black man dead from gunshot wounds in front of KAAL TV studios in Rochester, and the media places his death 200 yards away around the corner of a building on the other side of a parking lot 
because they don't want to say the guy died at KAAL in front of their studio, blocking their service entrance with his vehicle. But um, or instead of saying that a guy was shot in the parking lot of a uh, gangland style with the powder marks in the back of his head, he was forced to kneel and he's shot assassination. Was you know it was take, but instead of saying he died at thus and such a spot, I'm not going to mention uh, the name of the building that was lied about. They place his death at Apache Mall, which is almost two miles away. So, or and there's a third case of a, uh, and I, it just may she rest in peace. But there's a third case where the the de- the disappearance of a woman uh, was kept. Uh, secret for nine days there's a missing person situation in rochester and that she she uh died under strange interesting circumstances but we're the media doesn't ask the questions of the power establishment that needs to be asked to if they don't know geographically the places that they're talking about well, how do we i mean we're more accurate than the media is many times so how do we? Well, one thing we do, Wes, is if we're there, you know, we run our video, we run our tape, and we say, hey, we're at, you know, and this car is located right in front of KAL, if that's the example we're going with, you know, or, or yes, it's true that police blocked off this intersection, but police blocked off six intersections around the actual incident and the incidents at. You know, we have to call that out. If we can't do it during the moment, we can certainly, as an eyewitness, say, I was there. That's not what happened. When we see legacy media interviewing somebody, or even when a patriot or a potential school board member, city council member, or somebody is being interviewed by legacy media, turn your camera on and tape word for word exactly what's going on because what we've seen time and time again, and you know this, they edit snippet that they're going to broadcast to say what they want to say. Whereas if we have the whole thing, we can say, hey, wait a minute, that's not in context. That's not in the order of what it was said. And the more we point that out, people from, no matter if you want to call it sides in our great one Minnesota with no division, people from both sides or all sides can look at that video and go, hmm, that's kind of sus. You know, and that's really what we need. It's just exposure, exposure, exposure to what they're doing, correct them, call them out on it. And I'll go this far. I think it's only appropriate to call out the reporter or the photographer that's doing the damage because of yeah. this. Not not yes. not to not to dox them. No. But it is not fair to those that aren't behaving that way in media. It's yes. just like if you have a rogue teacher and your school board says, you can't call anyone out by name. Baloney, your policies don't mean anything to me. I'm not an employee of your school district. I'm right. not going to taint and say, all oh, the teachers are doing this. If there's one teacher that's doing something inappropriate, I have every right in the world to call that person out by name or call their attention to the board so you can get a redress of your grievances. You can have it addressed. That's that's going to be in the news uh Probably tomorrow there's going to be a big school board meeting and there'll be some things happening at that. I'm wondering also um, when we call the media, it's interesting. How, have you ever had the experience as I have of you call up the media and you tell them they got the story wrong and they actually change it? I mean, I've been able to call the TV stations here in Rochester and say, you know, your, your headline is wrong and I'll tell you why. And the station manager, the the general manager of the TV station says, you know what, you're right about that. Uh, we'll, we'll fix that today. It's, it, it, it's uh, they, they make simple errors like misspellings and so forth and punctuation. But sometimes the, the headline or the story itself is pointing people exactly in the wrong way. When you call the station on it, they go back and they edit their story. That that makes you and I the editors. We need to get people more accustomed to calling up and saying, you know, the story is just misleading and wrong. So That's fabulous, Wes. I've never actually done that or thought of that. I've I've personally been a victim of stories that were way off base, 
and and they don't do follow up. Of course, they say they will. Oh well, we'll continue to watch this story, and you never hear about it again. Um, but I had not thought of that, and that's excellent. More of us need to hold that station accountable. Now I've gone on social media. I've done the meme thing where I screenshot their headline and circled it or corrected it or changed it. I do that a lot with Governor Walls on Twitter. I'm sure he loves me for it. But all of the BS propaganda that he puts out there. Um, oh, the free. I love the last one was uh, how many free breakfast and lunches they've served. And yeah. Both the governor and the lieutenant governor posted that with this beautiful little graphic. And I, I just went in. I screenshot the graphic and I typed free as in paid for by taxpayers, and then I reposted it. That's a correction. Now, what, yes. I, what you did, I like even better because you are, you know, they're, they're aware, oh, shoot, somebody's watching, somebody's saying something. And by golly, if, if they correct it, then in all honesty, we kind of own the kudos for that and the, and the, the mention, at least, that, that we called, and they, they changed that to a less Ooh. divisive headline or, or, you know, more meaningful. The feeding our future fraud was uncovered by whistleblowers inside the school board, the people making the sandwiches, the people throwing away the food at the end of the day. The feeding our future fraud was really uh, uncovered. None of that food was free. All that food that was bought and paid for. And you're looking at $250 million of fraud, waste and abuse inside the feeding our future fraud. And you've got over 70 Department of Justice, United States DOJ indictments coming down in Minnesota for this fraud activity. And it all started with people having the courage to pick up the phone and say something. They saw something, they recorded what was going on, and they reported it to the United States government. In many cases, they're not even bothering with the local authorities because it seems like the corruption in Minnesota is getting so out of hand. Um, he reminded me of another case of people having their cameras ready. There was an important conservative event which occurred in Rochester and a cameraman and an intern, uh, you know, another one of these cutie pie interns was dispatched to the conservative event and the, the cutie was looking on her phone and she wasn't engaged at all with what was happening around her and the seasoned cameraman was trying to tell her what to do and how to ask questions but she was on the phone he's like put your hand in the air ask a question well the ladies the women who were standing nearby that reporter saw this interaction and they thought it was strange because the cameraman is a famous guy in the area so the ladies the conservative women went over close to the female reporter who looked like she was you know she's acting like like a teenager frankly Sure. She's probably 20 years old at the time or 21 at the time, but she's acting like a teenager. And they thought, what is she so engaged with in her phone? Well, she was on the phone with the DFL in Olmstead during this important event. And she's on the phone texting back and forth with DFL in Olmstead. That was the that was the so the the women, as only women can do got over her shoulder and nice and close. So they <laughs> they picked up the fact that here's this reporter, this this girl in public, and she's taking she's taking communications directly during a conservative event, she's taking communication directly with the DFL in Olmstead. And then and then when she asks her question, the phone is briefing her on what to say. So basically she's I mean, it's it's hilarious. So the ladies recorded that, and it became, uh, it became a video, and it be, it got released on the internet. And that that so-called reporter had a a bad experience. Later, they discovered that she was a DFL operative. She had Biden Harris stuff all over her social media. She um, had some awfully militant uh, posts on her social media pro pro-abortion and beyond black lives matter it was black trans lives matter <laughs> you, know, you know if we keep it, adding if all we, all kinds of lefty <laughs> if we keep adding to everything that matters eventually <laughs> they're going to make a mistake and everybody really will matter because they're going to just list you know do, do, do. we'll just keep adding the letters and the, the pronouns 
pretty soon everybody really will matter like they do, but even the lefties will realize. It. Wes, right. I love that story, but you're right. That's that's a great story of why just having that camera ready and realizing that something you may not even realize what's a foul. How yeah. many times have we thought I'm just going to record just in case, and we get sometimes we get a little gold nugget, but it's still a nugget. Gold has value, <laughs> or or we get you know the carrot, the carrot. Yeah. And and what I tell people is, even when we're blowing these stories apart or a court case apart, it's not about the smoking gun anymore, because that term's been overused and nobody believes it. It's every time you can poke a hole in their story or their narrative. Right. Or every little gold nugget, pretty soon that scale is like, wow, gold's pretty heavy compared to the BS pile you're feeding. <laughs> you know, so it's not always about the smoking gun. It's those little bits and pieces of that representative that's not representing or of the media who's twisting and, and putting that knife in the back to keep the, you know, to keep the division or whatnot. And that's what we have to do every time, every time. Call it out, call it out, call it out. You remind me of another uh, story. If I, I'll try to make it really brief, but it was one of these smoking gun things where I was driving in traffic and I was behind Mayor Brady. And Mayor Brady had a bumper sticker on his car for a certain Democrat candidate. And I snapped the photograph and I published it and uh, with uh, uh, crossing off his... Uh, license plate he's since bought a new car so he's not driving that car anymore and the bumper sticker's gone of course but uh what that led to was people said well i always thought he was a republican well you assumed he was a republican but but he's not and then we looked back into his donor uh contribution files and we found uh you know all these when people saw who he'd been contributing to, they realized that they'd been really uh, fooled by the establishment into thinking that we have a, a, a two-party situation. But on one level, uh, we know that there is partisanship in Rochester, as there's partisanship everywhere. On one level, there's partisanship, but the public face, they say at the same time that everything's nonpartisan. So we're being told that everything's nonpartisan and you're not supposed to. It's bad to be a partisan. It's it's wrong to be a partisan. But then on another level, we have the uni party where there really is the uni parties working in concert. Why can't with we all people. just get oh. along? <laughs> Why can't we all just get along? Yeah. Well, you got uh, Commissioner Kiss Caden. Uh, you know, you've got so, uh, you have uh, Dave Senjum who was a Democrat and now Republican. You have Fran Bradley, who was a Democrat, now is a Republican. I myself was a Democrat, and I'm not really accepted by the Republicans. But, uh, you know, my political journey is, is pretty strange in itself. But really, the party labels don't matter so much as are you supporting the Constitution of the United States of America? Are you protecting and defending this land from all enemies, foreign and domestic? You know, there's that level of professionalism where you, that's the old school civics that we grew up with, Keith, is that we love our nation and it shouldn't matter which party you're in. Do you, so. <clears throat> you're, right. you're right. And that's the whole point with the media. We grew up back in the day when there were investigative reporters. Okay, much like Liz Collin, one of my old favorites, I don't know if you remember, Bob McNanny from KSTP Channel 5 was a tenacious investigative reporter. And back in the day, even, even major news people, they wrote their own stuff. They researched their own stories. Those were the true reporters. Not Even the anchors back in the day did a lot of their own homework. They weren't just there because they were eye candy, which, by the way, is why I went in radio I, instead of television. OK, I've right. got I've got a face for radio like no tomorrow. Um, yeah. And that's why I went that route <laughs> rather than TV. But when you when you look at reporters today and you can see it because you've seen the montages, you've seen the collage where the headline news story for the night and the words used leading up to the story were the exact 
same in every same owned station across the nation. Yes. Folks, if that isn't a clue, then yeah. you're clueless. The Mockingbird media is definitely, yeah. in fact, right. Keith. It's so, Operation Mockingbird, but it, it's simple things, too. Like, you can scroll down the walls of the social media feeds for your local station, and you, you scroll down the walls. I've done this before, where I'll have, like, a couple few devices open and i scroll down the walls all the feeds are identical i'm going well this is amazing you know but then you look at the ownership and you realize that fox news in rochester is owned by the same corporation as kaal and they share the building they got two fronts on the same building it's like that moment in jfk where the investigator realizes that there's two entrances to the same building once the ones around the corner. So. <laughs> so you just brought up a critical point in that Mockingbird Media and owned by the same or under the same conglomerate umbrella even to, to try to hide things from us, okay? What do they do? They share the same story, right? This station shares it, this station shares it. They all tell the same. They all have their, their spiel is identical. Folks, that is exactly what we must do. I don't really care if you like me i really truly yeah. don't i i'm a human being would i like you to like me yes does it make me feel good to know that you like me yes but what i what we need to do is share each other's stories and videos and posts because we aren't legacy media we don't have those dollars we don't own several channels. When Stu Peters comes out with something hot and it's spot on and you want to share it, you share it. Well, why don't you do that for West Lund or Keith Haskell? And I'm not comparing us to Stu or, or Glenn Beck or anybody like that at all. I don't want to be that. That's not my aspiration. Right. When they're, But we have just as good of information at times. Yeah, we and realize. Not. <laughs> so... Why we drive the news and we also create, we wag the dog with what we report. All of a sudden, they copy us or they have to change their story or pull it down. Sorry, back to you. Go ahead. No, you're okay. So, so not only must we share, and, and must is an important word. We must because we've got to get the word out. I share everything from Otter Tail County. I don't even know where it is on the map. Right. I mean... I kind of do, and being in storm spotting, I have you know all 83 yeah. or 86 counties on a map because I try to recognize the outline of each county. I don't know where Otter Tail County is, but I share those stories when I know that they're accurate and true or that they raise a concern. And folks, we just have to do a better job of that. Well, that's true. In the Otter Tail County story, I remember thinking right away, uh, I forgot there was a county named Otter Tail. You know, I learned that in fifth grade, but you know what? Uh, these people have original source material. They're all being kicked out of the room. They're not being allowed to participate in the political process. And you know what? I'm going to share this because it's not right. Sorry. They showed up to caucus or they showed up as delegates and then they're not seated. So I'm going to share that because they had the, the unmitigated gall to open up their cameras. And they were they had these the, the officials were saying some terrible on, they have a case. They have a case and a half. And that, that is going to have repercussions. It's already had repercussions for the Minnesota State GOP. It's why they got 53 bucks in the bank. And it's it's going to be worse, Wes, because I don't know if you saw the latest news. And, I, and I'll give credit. I read it on uh, either Alpha News or Action for Liberty. I'm not really sure which. But now they've already let the cat out of the bag of what their plan is because if these delegates and alternates are successful in getting seated, I saw one line that was just a huge red flag to me. Um, they questioned they questioned some authority within the GOP about, you know, uh, hey, you need to do the right thing and you need to vote to reinstall these people. And that 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 representative of the GOP said something to the effect of even if that happens they'll be put on trial at the state convention now that was one sentence uh, one sentence where the gop just exposed exactly what they plan see they really are closer to the democrats than you think because they're telling you to your face what they're going to do now i know i know i'm not super intelligent i know i'm not the only yeah. one that's up on that and i know there's things behind the scenes 
happening, but they're already telling you that our own party, again, is going to waste more and more and more resources to keep duly elected, elected, duly so, elected alternates and delegates off of their BPOU. So that, yeah, the, the, the Minnesota state GOP and the local, the GOPs are, are a hot mess. It's, just, it's a embarrassment. It's been going on for a long time. Um, and they don't listen to people. So uh, all they seem to want is your check. Yeah. So that's well, how um, do we, then, as media, uh, and how do we, not that that's a narrative, but you and I have both had lots of feedback about shut up. You're exposing all these things and we're supposed to be going after the DFL and da, 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 da. Yeah, I go. True. Yeah. And, and we do, we do, but yeah. If we don't expose the problems in our own party, and you can't just expose them, because no, I've, no. I've been very close to some serious for, health infractions. For me, though, I, I have a limited amount of energy, and I, um, during all of that stuff, I have not bothered trying to find out like all the nitty gritty details of what's going on between all these different people. And before that, it was all those different patriot groups, and it's all those people that want to be like the dreaded M word militias and stuff. And I just ignored all of that. I've been going to city council meetings. I've been speaking at, at uh, county commissioners meetings. I've been speaking at uh, school board meetings. So I've been focusing on issues and directing all my fire toward not just the DFL where I do videos in front of the DFL headquarters here in Rochester because because they're in charge. They are the power establishment. So if I'm down in the mud fighting with a bunch of people over he said, she said over there, I don't have any energy to go after the power establishment. So I was I was going to ask you, like, how do we get the DFL to care about the lack of media coverage as much as you and I care? They don't they don't mind because the media serves as the stenographers for power. And because the DFL is the power establishment with the Uni Party and the Rhinos, the, the power establishment doesn't get criticized. And then um, it, once upon a time, like Noam Chomsky during you know Vietnam War era and Dan uh, Sheehan, the criticisms made of the media at that time were, were uh, good and valid. Their manufacturing consent during election season, they just want everyone to feel there's an election cycle, but the process goes on. Um, it's like the now that the DFL is in control, it's not the GOP or the it's not the so-called conservatives. It's not traditionalist society. It's it's more of a free for all. Uh, grab as much as you can. Give me that. Um, the more and more. They, they can't be convinced to come and criticize the power establishment because they are the power establishment and the media is just their their voice. I mean, that's is, is that is there another reason why we can't get people to direct their ire toward the correct target? I, I don't know, because this he said she all of that fighting on the GOP side to me, some of it seems by design. Like Sun Tzu style, the DFL doesn't need to do anything when their enemy is destroying itself. Just well, don't get involved. Just let them, they're going to fight it out over there. And rest assured, too, that the DFL does have the same problems they have in fighting. We're not plugged into all their pages. Well, some of us aren't. Um, I, I see a lot of it. I mean, I've, I've completely gone off Facebook. I'm not, I don't, I'm not on Facebook Messenger. My profiles are still up. I don't have access to them. I don't add to them. I don't. I don't monitor. I don't have a Facebook account. I've gotten off that completely. I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of the censorship. How do we direct our energy at the DFL? Because we should be. Um, how do we direct it? You know, if and it's not just the DFL. If there's a candidate or a process that's wrong, and we're complaining about biased media, then we can't be biased. You bring up a very, very valid point. We can't we can't be just exposing things that are wrong here because there are things that there are things that are wrong everywhere, but we also need to expose what's right, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you bring up 
talking to media about what's wrong, then why not ask for equal airtime? Um, why not correct them when they're wrong? Why not tell them we appreciate a good story? You know, it's the same thing when we talked about writing to your representative. If you're going to write to your representative to chew them out, then I know there are some groups that say never thank an elected servant for doing their job because they take advantage of it. And I, yeah. I there's, there's a grain of truth to that, but there's also being a human being. You know, it's just like our police officer situation. They've got a horrible job if we don't thank them, if we don't let them know that we appreciate them. Now, does that mean all of them? No, it certainly doesn't. I have a lot less favor for the blue line when it comes to officers that don't understand the Constitution or the role they are supposed to play in protecting mm -hmm. we the people. But I can't beat them up that they're miseducated over decades by the system. Right. I can try to help educate them. When you try to help educate them and they turn a blind eye or a blind ear and they're just going to continue the boot licking ways, well, okay, then that's on them and then maybe I could put them in that other category. Do I back the blue? Absolutely. Do I back all the blue? Absolutely not. I can't. Right. I can't anymore. And I grew up backing them forever. Yeah. And there's a new type of police officer, too, who really is a leftist political activist who's infiltrated an institution and uh, with a with a purpose, with an agenda that is against the Constitution. It's it's right. a strange. Yeah. It's a strange it's a dynamic that we haven't even yeah. seen begin to play out compared to what's coming. Right. Um, some of right. the other coasts have big, big issues with it already. And it, it will reach Minnesota because we're so desperate oh. for law enforcement officers. Yeah. Uh, are that you know you have to have them. And you you watch, there'll be some sort of a massive hiring thing in Minneapolis to bring those numbers up through some federal funds that came across or maybe Soros is paying for it. We know who those officers are going to be. They're going to be the new arrivals. Yeah. So that people people are surprised. Yeah. All these military age fighting boys are going to become our military and our police force. And um, that is going to uh, they're already laying the groundwork for that. The first responders are, are fanning out telling people to get ready for that. They're they're calling it diversity, inclusion, and equity, but it's it's gonna be uh anyway, life think, goes on. I the think world it's so changes, funny that those, those initials spell such an important word. Die. Because <laughs> that's what they're trying to do. They're just yeah, trying to kill off what America is and stood for and has been all these you know centuries. And okay. that is they just want to kill off all the good. Well, the the it's you go back to Black's Law Dictionary and how the Constitution was written, and and then you you see the oh oh <laughs> no way so Wait. that's the, uh, <laughs> those are those are right across and on the same shelf from my other Bible. <laughs> so, oh my god. Yeah. Oh. Which I'm guessing is the Geneva edition, maybe. No, it's but. actually the Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Well, which one? Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, not the Quran. Yeah. No offense intended. No. no, we don't do Sharia law. Not yet, anyway. But they'll find out about that. All the, the liberal women that think that they're welcoming the stranger danger, they're, they're going to find out that. Um, yeah, Sharia has not been a uh, fun for a lot of women for centuries. No. It's not just a pretty scarf over your head. Uh, so let's not go that way. No, yeah, let's not dive too deep because there's plenty understand. of shows. Yeah, we want we don't want to get in trouble with YouTube, right? But um, I was going to say about Black's Law Dictionary that you have over your your your, your bookshelf there on your back back of you. Um, the influence of the Judeo-Christian tradition on the creation of the Constitution and um, our rights are derived from God, not from man, and that we shrugged off the divine right of kings. We shrugged that off. It's America that did that, that lit the torch of liberty that uh, eventually led to the French Revolution. I mean, what a disaster that was. But um, in a lot of ways, the French Revolution, horrible. 
process. But but America uh, created the environment wherein we could have freedom. And now we have people who think it's gone too far. It's the George Soros's and the billionaire Bloomberg's who think we need to uh, modify this situation a little bit to um, take away these higher aspirations. They want to have a permanent underclass and they want to create uh, a slave labor, you know, wage slavery situations for people. And they're never, they won't have the language skills to pull themselves out of poverty and become, you know, they're, they're doing very well. I mean, the Hispanics know how to work, man. And they, they really work. And they're, they are go-getters. They know exactly how to uh, get, uh, you know, get going. And they're saving money and they're, they're becoming productive citizens. And, and they and, take care of their family and yeah. they sacrifice. They love it church. built and bonds family. But they sacrifice a lot at times to live in very cramped quarters in order to be together and in order to save money. And, and they're not as nearly as wasteful as what I want to call the the common American, if that's yeah. a term and that's, that's not offensive yeah. or not politically correct, I apologize, kind of like I care. But yeah, I mean, other groups have made great sacrifices to get to what they believe America was. Right. We defended what we believed America was. And now through the Wizard of Oz, that curtain's kind of been pulled back and we're going, holy moly. Yeah. You know, um, and again, some of that, let's just let's just back the clock up. Some of that's because of little snippets of photos or little snippets of videos that are now coming forward. Some have been out there a long time that make us question their narrative. We were fed 30, 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, the things that we're doing today, we don't know. We hope. But we don't know how they're going to affect society or our children or our grandchildren 20, 30, 40 years from now when they look at some of this and go, wow, that's what happened. Yeah. You know, and, and we media. don't know. We don't know. We don't know what story we're breaking now or or hinting about or even close to that might become worldwide news 10, 20 years from now. Probably why, like, we keep churning this stuff out, and the legacy media keeps trying to remove content that we create, and the censorship is insane right now. I mean, I'll, I'll get more traffic on something I report on in town than the than the legacy media, but but my reportage, my actual video of the situation, is what needs to be taken down. Because so there's probably something in that, there's probably something in that video that I don't even see. Like at the at the KAAL station the next day when they were uh, fixing the cameras outside the front, my theory is that I captured some people uh, removing what I, I believe they were SD cards or they were, it was local media storage. In the they wanted to absolutely swap out that system and reset the cameras in front of the building to collect that evidence and that data of whatever had transpired in front of the building the day before. Mm -hmm. But, but um, there's other things like, uh, you know, capturing the reporter communicating with the DFL in Olmstead during a conservative event, you know, uh, uh, we, we catch something and we don't know if that's going to become a story or not, or how far that's going to go. So it's upsetting right. for them. Uh, just going up, by the way, um, reporters have a bad <laughs> habit a few years ago of going to events without any press credentials because they don't, they don't have any press credentials on their cameras. They're not wearing any press credentials. They don't have any logos. And what I started doing was making short videos of the reporters that were dressed in black from head to toe everything was black and that and there was nothing on their camera that indicated who they were or who they represented and i would go up to the reporter well, well assuming they're i say well here is a person filming our protest today 
I wonder who this person is. And I would, they have no logo and there's nothing on their camera. And, and the person would just, they would freeze up because you nailed it. And I'd say, where are your press credentials? Are you with a TV station? And I think I actually uncovered some deep state players. I may have actually uncovered some people who were sent to capture faces in the crowd. Oh, right. I, On I behalf of that. the deep state in Rock, yeah. I mean, you got to be an idiot to not understand that all the, the alphabet soup agencies are operating in Rochester, Minnesota. This oh, is absolutely. this is the most important employer in this region is right here in Rochester. So the power establishment is hyper concerned with what happens in this region. So, yeah, they're not above trying to find out who's participating. You and I are old enough and we have one foot in the grave, so to speak. So we just, you know, we may as well live out America. Yeah. yeah. My kids are grown. Well, yeah, d- but don't don't, re- don't big reveals, but we got to say anymore, but uh, we didn't, don't give them anybody to come after because I've had threats made against my family. I've had threats made against my I mean. I'm just going to generally say it. I'm not going to say like what the relationship is to me, but people uh, made specific threats against my family. Uh, They can do what they want to me, but, um, you know, don't give them a a touch, a launching pad to try to touch down and, and, and bother you, reach out and bother you. So. No, that's, that's very true. I think, Wes, when it comes to, you know, people that we're talking about and and being our own media, I I just want to remind everybody, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to talk on a microphone. You can just zip it and just record. In fact, sometimes that's best because there's better audio. We can hear what's going on. Um, And you don't have to broadcast something. If you get something, but, hey, you don't want to expose yourself, man, send that stuff to to us. You know, if, if you want... If you want credit for it, we'll give you the credit. If you want to remain anonymous, I will never violate that. Um, City employees are sending me their diversity, inclusion, and equity training materials. And then other city employees are are sharing information about complaints that they've made in human resources. And so, you know, and we're learning more. These Some people really want to talk because they see that things aren't right inside the police force or the fire department or some other aspect of, you know, an individual, a politician's office. And they're sharing uh, uh, text messages where somebody is weaponizing an agency of the government for political purposes. So, uh, some yeah, fast- some the- you know, it, yeah, some really interesting shenanigans and, and just, uh, you know, somebody making a threat like, oh, we know where you live, you know, because somebody's becoming a whistleblower and revealing, you know, policies and procedures inside the government here locally. But things are coming out more and more. People are sharing original yeah. source material. And, are, and sometimes they, they're recording long videos like they're sitting in a meeting and they're actually recording and the p- person they're talking to doesn't realize they're doing so you bring something up interesting (laughs) if you know you're going to be recording or you find yourself in a situation where hey this might be newsworthy i'm going to record please do yourself a huge favor and get away from chatty kathy yeah the microphone on a cell phone camera is so sensitive um, that it hears everything around you and if you've uh-huh. got someone behind you, yep, 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 yeah. we're not hear what you're trying to capture. And um, they might be doing that on purpose because they know you're recording. Exactly. So you and that full of our conversation. Yeah. We, we, we now have people who captured a lot of, so we have people that go to school board meetings and they're recording, or they go to city council meetings or county commissioners meetings. And then there's always like somebody who's on our side who comes over and says, you're, you're not supposed to be recording. There's a sign on the front door of the building that says, you're not supposed to record. There's a sign. Nobody's supposed to record anything. No, that sign 
is for when someone's paying their taxes and writing a check or they're registering to vote or they are um, uh, making a passport application or they're involved or they're in court. You can you can record in a government meeting. It you can record in a government meeting. You can record in a meeting a conversation that you are a party to. There's a, it's a one consent state, but that person tries to put a blanket of fear over everybody. Where I've briefed everybody, have your cell phones ready. But that sign on the front door is meant to scare everybody. That is only private data. You're not supposed to record or film or take photographs of other people's documents, other people's like application processes, if they're for whatever specific reason they're in the government building. But a government meeting, you are absolutely allowed to record. So that individual who did that to a group of activists just before a meeting became a person of interest to me. Why would she try to put, why would she go out of her way to try to put a blanket of fear over people and do something wrong like that at our action? Well, I'll tell you, she, I'll show you the documents later because I have, I have the original police report into that woman, what happened to her because she made huge mistakes in her activities that when we get together, I'll show you the police report. I found that she was the subject of a, a federal of a potential. Uh, well, it was a it was a federal violation. Right. And uh, it, but she got herself in trouble for basically not understanding, you know, what is OK to do and what's not OK to do. That's well, I have about five minutes left before my next conference, but yeah. So with what you said just now, there's a few other points. We see all these videos where um, people are challenging police officers and sheriffs or highway patrol, and they end up getting themselves arrested. And that video is meant to um, to snuff us out so that we don't we don't make those confrontations, we don't make allegations, we don't ask for accountability. It's a fear factor thing. If America right. knew the trillions of dollars in just the past five years that have been paid to First Amendment auditors or just people like you and I or innocents during a traffic stop, if you knew the trillions that have actually been paid out for those constitutional and civil rights violations and sometimes physical and mental damage to somebody, during what was a false or invalid arrest or detainment, you would understand the fear factor in that that's it's fear porn. That's what they're getting off on. Yeah. But legacy media, again, is not going to report that no. this city or that police department or this sheriff's department was sued. Uh, there's officers fired almost daily right now that I get alerts on for misconduct and dishonoring that badge and that oath. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah. and those violations and folks, we've got it. We've got to get over some of this fear. You know, yeah, some of those videos you can tell are production quality with bad acting in them. So it's just yeah. Yeah. those videos are just make believe. Yeah. It's, it's fear porn. But on the other hand, there were channels that were wildly successful channels where people were going to. Yeah government buildings and showing everyone how to do this correctly, how yes. to not make a mistake with your filming and and how to do a meeting without making a mistake. And they were instructing us all in how to behave. Well, then the the institutions realized we've got a real problem on our hands because nobody's believing the legacy media anymore. They're bypassing it. They're doing their own filming. Yeah, we got to tamp this down because We've got a real problem if they all start taking out their HD cameras. Those cameras are meant to monitor them, not us. But right. now we're all turning our cameras around. So the, you know, when I I covered the actual protest that teachers had the day after we defeated the school board referendum in Rochester. Basically, I had a you know anybody living in ISD five three five can thank me for keeping their taxes low. Oh. We, we, story. 
We've never seen anything like it before. There's never been anything like it. A, a tax referendum defeated in Rochester, Minnesota. And the teachers union had a big protest because they wanted money and they were threatening to go on strike. And I filmed that protest where the, the school board was surrounded with hundreds and hundreds of teachers on a, at a school board meeting and they were marching around the building. I covered that and that video was memory hold. The government, so that video was absolutely removed. They, it's gone. And I've asked Facebook, where is it? Where did you, it's, they don't want people to see. It really was about the teachers getting more money and the teachers <laughs> union, the signs were professionally printed. They didn't want everybody to see what happened. So anyway, Keith, I know you were, you were trying to segue into the next part of your day. We, we went on for an hour now, but this has been a great conversation long overdue. And, you know, I'm glad we're not in seventh grade where we can still talk to each other. We might not have all the same friends in our toolbox, you know, yeah. up to our left and our right. We don't have the same props and stuff and the same chops. But uh, I appreciate what you do. And I recognize that you're an inspiration to uh, the new media. And thanks for what you do, Keith. And uh, I'm glad, you know, we're not in seventh or eighth grade where I have to inherit your friends and enemies and you have to inherit my friends and enemies. We're, we're not, you know, childish about that. You know, now, see, I wish we were still in seventh and eighth grade because when you and I grew up in seventh, eighth grade, we punched each other because right. we were, there were no knives or guns. We punched each oh. other and then we went and played football together on the same team four hours later to beat the na neighboring town. I learned a lot when I got slammed up against the lockers a couple times, a few times. I learned a lot about ripping off to a 12th grader yeah. when I'm in sixth grade. Boom. You know, Wes, you brought up, I'll close with this. You brought up uh, the, the activists that came and gave all the fear warnings of you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to. When we've had, a, when we've had enough people and we were going to an event and we were anticipating different scenarios that might come into play. And by the way, that's called pre-planning. And it is important in our game plan. Right. We had that that our own eye candy piece that was off to the side just in case we had that detractor come and try to interrupt, even from in our own side, that we could cue in that person whose role was to come and grab Chatty Kathy by the arm and take her into a different conversation somewhere else. Oh, and, and good. You know, there's a reason I'm on one of the DFL pages and websites in a different persona that doesn't yeah. put a lot of photos up of myself. Right. You, learn, you can learn from your enemy, and everything you learn, everything you learn is not bad. Yeah, there. I'll leave it at that. Right now, because we're in the election year, they're starting to text out to a lot more people. And uh, a conservative contacted me earlier this week and said, how did I get on this telephone list for this crazy group in Rochester? They're in a, and I'm not going to say the group because I don't want them to comb through their records. Right. And, but but I said, don't don't reply. Don't say stop. Don't uh, turn off the connection. Just sit in the corner and watch. Absolutely. Because we we have people in other parts of the world. This is this is really fun. This is it's this is like we have people in other parts of the world that are watching the activities of, and I'll say this group's name, Isaiah Minnesota. Isaiah Minnesota is being watched by people who are in other parts of the world who are noticing the money trail to Isaiah, Minnesota, and the funding, the sources of the funding into Minnesota to pay for the activities of a group affiliated, connected to the DFL. So um, we're, we're just kind of watching that trail of breadcrumbs to see what it might lead to, because it might be a breaking story. Speaking of one of those breaking stories, if, if we can establish some of these connections, 
um, it's going to be a real strange reveal. I think you know what I might be. I'll tell you off. Actually, I'll tell you when we're offline about the funding. Good. Follow the money. Follow the yellow brick road. Yeah. Little little nuggets are fun. Did you see, Um. oh, what's that guy up at our state capitol? The guy that doesn't like to play nice in the sandbox. Tubby, Tubby Timmy. Is that it? Oh, did, sure. Did you see Tubby Timmy put a tweet out yesterday in relation to misquoting or taking out of context something that Donald Trump said about about the fact that if the election was stolen again, there'd be chaos type of comment. I'm not quoting. And Tubby Timmy said, no, there won't be because the good patriots, he used the word patriots. <laughs> Our governor used the word patriots. He said, the good patriots will accept whoever wins and whoever loses. And I thought, Patriots from our governor? You mean like Patriot Lisa Hansen or Patriot Lisa Monet or you know Patriot Larvita McFarcourt? Those kind of patriots now, Governor? Now you're going to respect them and honor them? You no. fraud. No, it's the it's leftists stealing our language because they don't have any original words, so they have to morph it and corrupt the meaning of the word. You know, the, the patriot word is a word that I avoided because it pigeonholed people and I you know I want to say to a lot of people you you better get some better advice before you start talking about things like militias and stuff like that it's like we have to be uh, we have to be so correct we have to be 150 percent correct because there's people fanning out and I don't understand why they're doing this but they well I do they try to involve people in wrong things. And it's it's really easy to stay correct if you're just just uh, hey that doesn't smell right that doesn't pass the smell check. I've avoided a lot of problems in life because I don't take that quick suggestion that I do thus and such. I have some ability to have agency to choose, and I encourage everybody in this election season, you know, just stay away from the crazy talk. Avoid the you know. It's starting up again, and it's it looks like January sixth. I told people don't go. Just you know, yes, I'm, we, would, we would be so better off if we walked. And I'll give you a perfect example: the city I'm in, I could walk across the parking lot to the next sister building to to where I live, and I have and met with some of the Somalian or other ethnic groups and talk about what's going on. They voted Democrat all their life, but trust me, if you think they like this diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff and the sexual talk in our schools, uh, uh and you know what? We'd be better off getting them to understand what, what the conservative message and our preamble and our, our beliefs are and, and correct the misinformation and get them to vote on our side. I'll tell you what, that's where we would, again, like Jesse Ventura did, we shocked the world. That's where we could shock our local world is if we met with some of the other groups that are um, not very happy with what the DFL is doing and showed them what the Republican Party really is about. Yeah, it's about family and it's, you know, the the wonderful that's why I'm doing these videos in Spanish right now, because the Hispanics don't know yet. Some of them do that. The DFL stands for the things it does. And the Somalis are not going to. Um, I, I'd like to interview an imam at the mosque here in town because our, our mom was educated at the University of Cairo here in, placed in Rochester in Cairo University is the foremost Sharia law university in the world i'd like to interview him and i'm thinking about doing that because i want to ask him how he feels about party politics as we head into the i mean all of the lutheran pastors are certainly coming to city council meetings and they're being uh, weaponized by isaiah minnesota and olivia bergen and political activists from the dfl so they filibuster our city council meetings to project this image that everybody's behind the leftist agenda, but I don't think the rank and file membership of of the I don't think they're allowed to speak on behalf of the Lutheran Church 
when they're coming to town. And I'm uh, getting set to look at IRS, you know, violations and things of that sort. Because yep. it's time to take the gloves off with some of these uh, man bun pastors. It is. Hey, Wes, let's uh, let's plan a date in the near future and go over these public data requests. Huge success when you know what you're doing and you do it the right way. And I'm not insulting anyone that's doing it, but I get feedback every week from people that are frustrated and they can't get answers or they right. get stonewalled or they get one tenth of the information. Right. Folks, I'm telling you, I've got this down right down to yeah. actually filing the lawsuits against the offenders and winning and I just, we've really got to cover that. There are some key things that people are doing not as well as could be done. And yeah. I'd really love to hit home on that one. That's our plan. Uh, I know we've had that plan for about a week or so. We're going to uh, try to have a session where we have you come over and speak to a small group of activists. And maybe we could do that through um, contacts at the exec committee of the local BPOU. Actually, they had a great session with Rick Weeble Saturday morning on hand counting ballots. Nice. So it was a tremendous session where they're actually practicing counting out by hand the ballots. It's faster, it's less expensive, you get your results the same night, and it's a clear process involving uh, eyes on and witnesses that complaint in the past was that the judges would say well you don't have anybody who could do this there's nobody who's trained well these training camps are for learning how to do it because the machines are failing us the machines is uh, that's where the steel is allocated and it has to it has to end um dominion none of these uh, dominion what a name for a coffin oh that's crazy talk right they're dominionists they, they want rule rulership over the world so um hiding in plain sight it, it always it, our conversations always end up yeah it's in plain sight it's stalin land where our conversations always end up like this it's great talking to you and we'll do our next session on that topic of freeing out the feeding up uh, filling out freedom of information acts try saying that fast three times thanks keith and see you next time Thank you, Wes. Have a blessed day. Thank you.